Hi, welcome back to baristabrothers.com. I'm David. And I'm Matt. Today we're going to have a look at the correct temperature to heat the milk up to when we're frothing milk and some methods to achieve that and also we want to have a look at making sure it's consistently the same temperature as well. Nothing worse than going into a cafe and getting a coffee delivered after you've paid your three or four dollars uh, and getting a coffee that's either too hot but literally burns your mouth. McDonald's had a problem many years ago with milk that scalded someone's mouth. The other problem that is more common actually is that the coffee is not hot enough and the reason is the milk is not being heated to the right temperature. Absolutely. So we need to get the right temperature. When the milk is too cold, the milk's too thick and the flavour of the espresso just can't get through and we end up with a horrible tasting coffee. And of course when we score the milk then we end up with a burn bitter coffee. So we need to, as a barista, make sure that we're consistently getting the right temperature. Now one method of doing that that is used is people get a jug, they'll put their hand on the side of the jug when they're frothing the milk and when it's too hot to hold anymore, then you let go. And then what happens is you put your hand on the side and when it's too hot to even touch anymore, then a good method might be, and many people use this, to count to three and then turn off the steam one. Now it takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of thinking to get that right, but you can get a consistent cup of coffee using that method. So I guess overall the rule is too hot for you to hold, milk must be hot enough to drink, therefore pour it into the customer's cup. Um, and as David said, it works for some. It doesn't work for everyone though, and this is where the thermometer can come in handy when you're frothing milk. Now we had 50 people working for us in our um, four cafes, and using that hand on the side method, we had a few people who were very good at it, but on the whole we found we were just getting inconsistencies coming through. We had some milk going out that was too cold, some milk that was going out that was, that was too hot, and we were getting some complaints. So what we thought was we have to use something that can get a consistent temperature to the milk every time one of the team members made a cup of coffee. So we used a thermometer. Got to use a thermometer, I think, in a cafe setting if you want consistency. So the notion that uh, frothing milk is some sort of artisan craft and, and the uh, implementation of a thermometer is going to ruin that craft, I think is a very outdated notion and I think this is why it's such an important part in our barista classes that you put a thermometer in and you make sure you get it right absolutely every time. Yeah, so what kind of temperature are we looking for then? Well I think you're looking for a, the ideal temperature um, that's sort of universally accepted, we, we would agree and this is what we teach, is 150 degrees Fahrenheit or in Celsius, 65 degrees. The ideal zone, if you want to be a little less specific than that, might be 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and in Celsius that would be a zone of between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius. So you can get thermometers actually that have that zone in a different colour. So as the barista, as you're looking at the thermometer and glancing down when you're texturing your milk, you can see that little red needle on the thermometer winding up and when it hits that ideal temperature zone, turn off the valve on the machine and the milk is hot enough to drink. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we created when we created our thermometers. We put the zone on there and we said we want to end up in the middle of that zone, basically, as Matt said. Now, if you're running a business, you could decide, well, I want my milk to be a little bit hotter, or I want it to be a little bit colder, but we think in that zone is probably the ideal area. And remember, with some commercial machines, there's so much steam pressure coming off that you'll actually need to turn off the steam on a little bit before you get to that zone, so it ends up in the middle of the zone. It's very easy for people to scald milk, I find, because they're not concentrating on what they're doing. Absolutely. So it's very, very important. It's critical to flavour. It's critical for consistency. If you want people coming back time and time again in a cafe situation and not have the burden of people returning coffees when you're extremely busy, a thermometer is, is the way to go. And we're going to have a close-up look at how the thermometer performs as you spin and texture the milk and what exactly you're looking for and why you get that good, beautiful quality and temperature in milk. Yeah. So I think in summary, you need to pick the method that's going to be best for you, but whatever you pick, especially if you're running a business, you've got to make sure that your product is consistent. So if you're not using a thermometer, make sure the people that are frothing the milk, whether it be you or someone else, is doing the right job and you've got the milk going out at the right temperature. 
And for anyone using it at the moment, make sure that they're using it properly and make sure everybody's sending out the milk at the agreed temperature. Interesting little anecdote um, to finish. Our system recently got a very beautiful espresso machine, a BBMA machine uh, installed in her house. We, we've had them for many years and, and we love them. Um, she delivers babies or um, is involved in the medical field anyway and her hands are very, very delicate and she said to us, I don't want to use a thermometer, that's not the way it's done, I want to use my hand and we said, okay, uh, go for it and so she made the first copies and she thought it was very, very hot and the milk was actually only about 40 degrees so the copies that she served um, off the bat were lukewarm and absolutely terrible. Reason? Maybe her hands were very delicate and the heat being transferred into the fingers was happening very, very quickly, as opposed to someone who may have had 30 years experience behind the bar uh, working as a barista would have a higher tolerance for heat and would therefore heat the milk to a higher degree. So these little things can impact on the non-thermometer method. Actually, well, I had the opposite happen in one of our classes. I had a lady in who had nerve damage in her hand and she didn't realise that she was actually schooling the milk mm. and she too was using a thermometer but not paying any attention to it and just using her hand method which she used at home and she said, well actually, you know what, I've been schooling the milk all along, I don't know. Mm. Well that's a good point and, and the other thing that people say sometimes is that a good barista should be able to blindfold themselves and therefore not see a thermometer and just listen to the precise sound that milk makes when it is the ideal temperature. Uh, and to some degree that's true, but it's a very imprecise method, I think, of getting the right temperature, listening for the sound. What is the sound? What is the reference point? And with years of experience, there is a distinct sound, but to be honest, that sound happens for quite a large temperature um, scope. And so you can hear that sound for maybe 15 degrees. Where in that 15 degrees is precisely the right moment in time? to turn off the valve. And that's why I don't favour that, that particular method. So the screeching, the sound method is a little bit imprecise. So I think precision can only come with a scientific instrument like a thermometer. And as David said, if you don't want to use it, that's fine. But if you want consistency every single time you make coffee, we've been making coffee for a long time. And at home, I still use a thermometer. I don't want to serve my guests that come over or myself coffee that's not the right temperature. Life's too short for cold coffee. I like the blindfold. I think it's kind of a cool party trick. It might be a little bit dangerous in the wrong hands, though. <laughs> oh, absolutely, I think so. I actually saw it on a barista competition once. The guy was, uh, that was his little bit of flair, and uh, cool. uh, it was interesting, but not a method that I'd recommend for a ball on Sunday. <laughs> absolutely not. All right, well, that's uh, the story of milk. We're going to overlay this with some footage as we've been talking of. Uh, the thermometer and also the hand method, just so you can see that as well. So, once again, thank you very much for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you again. I'm David. And I'm Matt. See you next time. Bye bye.